afternoon all. Sorry, I can't be there this afternoon. Um, but I'd already made my presentation about what I've been doing this year, so I thought I'd video it and send it through to you. Um, so I've been working on three main areas, organisational, um, strategic and some staff development in there. So within organisational, we've been looking at three areas, subject selection, timetabling and curriculum documentation. Within subject selection, we've been looking at timelines. So for instance, this is our one from term two, looking at what needs to be done when to make sure we've got our handbooks on time, and then we then got our subject selections on time, we then make decisions about what courses are made. Ultimately with the aim of ensuring that Michael has things when he needs them in order to get our timetable ready for transition, which is our plan for this year. Also been working on, of course, the subject expo and the course counselling process, along with Gabriel. <coughs> Within Yes, I've also been looking at the curriculum documentation. Um, so we've been doing some timelines um, and whole school curriculum that. And we've had some feedback from PLT leaders that they felt last year they were doing a lot of doubling up on that. Um, so this is our this year's whole school curriculum map. Um, I've been revising this to make sure the template we use next year will require everyone to put in their data just once. And that will then automatically sync to make an assessment calendar, sync to make a whole school curriculum map, and also to make their individual subject timelines. Um, this has been used to communicate with parents via the newsletter. Um, well, we actually put a link in the newsletter and then put the data up on Compass on the newsfeed to let them know what topics their child is studying in each subject area. Around about, um, there is a disclaimer that it's a bit approximate, so that they can support their child at school. We've also been looking in timetabling, at making sure we know what the preferred and fallback rooms are for each ones. Looking at when making sure we know what our staff are qualified to teach, so we've got that flexibility in our timeline. And as I say, we're aiming to get this timetable ready for transition. The other area I've been looking at is strategic leadership. So you all know because you all gave me feedback on it that we're looking at the curriculum policy started rewriting it in term one of this year because the draft that we had didn't really reflect the changes that we made for the start of this year. I'm now in the process of collecting feedback with the aim of taking that to school council next term. So we've started with some staff feedback, we'll also be aiming for some parent and student feedback. The other thing I've been working on is planning for the implementation of the Victorian curriculum, um, including putting in <coughs> excuse me, the general capabilities. So with the PLT leaders, we've mapped these general capabilities, as well as all the other domains that are more subject specific, across all the subject areas. Um, so we asked each PLT to nominate a preferred and also a backup area that they wanted to work on. And what you can see is we've made sure that each of the general capabilities is specifically taught and then specifically assessed at least once, or at least in one subject area, in both Year 9 and Year 10. The aim will then be to expand on that next year to ensure that you know, we're getting backing up of these skills and they're not just taught in isolation in one particular context. Um, but this is a great start because it means that we are meeting that requirement but also making sure those essential skills are taught integrated into the curriculum rather than just standalone in tutorial. Will be done in tutorial as well but not just on its own there. Final area that I've been working on is staff development. Um, so working with the PLT leaders on building an effective team. I've been having one-on-one -on -one meetings with them overall, every term, um, some of them more than once a term, making sure they've got that opportunity for input, um, but also making sure that I'm building that rapport with them um, so that they feel comfortable coming to me when they need advice and making sure that they know that they've got input into things like rooming and staffing without having the whole say in it. And that has been a challenge and a bit of adjustment for some of them. Um, also within staff development, um, so Gabriel, who's new to the BCE system, helping him understand the BCE structure in the school. Um, similarly, particularly in Term 1, working with Morel and Will, so helping them understand BCE regulations and our school policies that I've set up and put in place. And of course, we've had a bit of a turnover in our tutorial leaders, and they've all been new to the role. Um, so a bit of support there for them in terms of how to 
planner program and how to integrate it and make sure staff are aware of what's going on. For next year, or the rest of this year, what I'm really looking at working on is looking at the process for early entry into 3.4. I haven't really discussed it for a couple of years, and in particular, the way in which we identify subjects that students can enter, I think is a bit problematic at the moment. Um, but we're using Ausbells, which I don't think we're particularly good at assigning. But I also think there's a question mark over whether we should be saying specific subjects are needed to go into particular VCE subjects Unit 3-4. Um, also going to be looking at our curriculum maps and how we can develop more flexible curriculum um, that students can have multiple entry and exit points and how that is then aligned to their assessment. Um, so if they're not all learning the same thing, what do we then do about assessing them? And of course the implementation of the Victorian curriculum. And it turns out five minutes is not very long at all because uh, that is over. Um, enjoy the rest of your meeting, guys.